So you've probably heard about the MBTI, the Myers-Briggs type, and the Enneagram. Those are two huge personality tools and assessments that have taken the entrepreneur world by storm. And if you have questions and are confused by like, how do I use this? What is it? What are the differences between the two? This video is for you, so keep watching. There's one big thing about being an entrepreneur that I think is huge and will help you with success. And that is self-awareness. So knowing who you are, why you do things, what your core desires are, how you interpret the world, what your core fears are. And the two tools that are going to help you with this are the MBTI and the Enneagram. And so I'm going to cover both of those tools and what they are in this video. I did a video previously about how I use these tools for my business secret. And I shared that before. I will drop that in the description below so y'all can check that out. But today I am deep diving into what the MBTI is. So the Myers-Briggs type and what the Enneagram is. And we're going to cover both of those things. The Enneagram is that type that you see with the different nine types. I'm an Enneagram one or I'm an Enneagram, or I'm an Enneagram seven. So each of those different nine types represent a different personality. Now you may have seen the symbol of like the circle with all the like lines crossing through it. That's not a pentagram, which is actually what I thought it was as a freshman in college. The first time I had heard of the Enneagram. But the Enneagram is a personality assessment that helps you understand your core desires and your core fears. Each type is broken down by what their core fear and their core desire is. So for me as an Enneagram 4, one of our core desires or the core desire is to be the most unique. And we want people to recognize that. And our core desire, and this one I don't really relate to as much, but it's that we fear being abandoned or we fear being unknown or not enough. So that is kind of what each type has. Each type is different and I won't go into the core desires and core fear of each one, but just know that there are nine types and each one has a core fear and a core desire. The second part of the Enneagram is wings. So as a four on the Enneagram, my wings are either going to be a three or a five. Each Enneagram type has wings. So you may be an Enneagram nine, your wing is going to be a one or an eight. These are the numbers on either side of you. So you could not be an Enneagram one wing six. That does not make sense. But I have seen people saying that on the internet, so I just want to clear that up. Your wings are the two numbers on each side of your core type. I also want to remind y'all that there is not a best type or a worst type. No type is better or worse than the other. They are all amazing in their own way. They all have their own problems. They all go to numbers out in stress. They all go to different numbers when they're very healthy. So there is no best Enneagram type. I love being a type four and we're not the best. You know, there is no best. We're all an equal playing field. And I feel really bad because a lot of times I feel like there are certain numbers that get bad raps. So like a six, I feel like a lot of people see sixes as weak. They are not weak. They are just prepared for the unexpected, right? So I always joke that if I'm ever going on vacation or, you know, if the zombie apocalypse does happen, I want an Enneagram six with me because they're prepared and they brought the toilet paper. Also within the Enneagram the entire nine numbers are segmented into three types. So there's the head, the heart, and the gut. And each of these is what you call the triads. So there's the heart triad, which takes up numbers two, three, and four, which again, I'm a four, I'm in that heart triad. And then the head triad is five, six, and seven, where the gut triad is eight, nine, and one. So it kind of goes in a circle, which it's interesting because once you realize like, oh, I'm a four wing three, well, I'm double heart centered, right? So you can see how sometimes so like for a four wing five, you could be a little conflicted because it's like my head versus my heart, right? So it's really interesting to dive into that and know a little bit more about each one of those triads. 
The last thing about the Enneagram is this is part of your nurturing. So this is part of your upbringing. And it's interesting that the people that develop the Enneagram can say that it has related to how you were brought up as a child and which parent you favored. So when you look at those types, you can know that. And so the nurturing is where it comes from the parenting and how you have those core desires and core fears play out, which is really interesting because I want to go into the MBTI, but the MBTI is your nature. So we're going to hop over to that in right now. We're going to go over to the MBTI. So that's all the things about the Enneagram that I'm going to cover in today's video. But next up, like I said, is the MBTI, Myers-Briggs type. So as I mentioned, the MBTI, the Myers-Briggs type indicator, is your nature. So how you naturally are. And there are four different dichotomies within the MBTI, which allows for the 16 letters. So, or the 16 different variant types. So the four different dichotomies, each one has two different letters. So we start with the I versus the E, the introvert versus the extrovert. Then we go, and and let me tell you, the I versus the E is how you prefer to, do you prefer an inner world or an outer, wor outer world? How do you like, do you like to be inside your head or do you prefer to process externally? And I've talked about this before on my video about introverts and yeah, so that's the first dichotomy. So the second dichotomy is intuition versus sensing. So do you prefer to take in that information and interpret it as what it is? Or do you take that information, interpret it and add meaning? So the intuition is what adds the meaning. The sensing is just taking that information in and it is what it is. So on the third dichotomy, thinking versus feeling with thinking, do you look at logic and consistency and that's how you form an opinion or with feeling, do you look at special circumstances and the people behind it and add, you know, the, the feeling part to it. So thinking versus feeling. And the last one is judging versus perceiving that last dichotomy is do you prefer that things are just decided and you get to a decision and that's it? Or do you prefer to kind of take a little relaxing stroll and as you, you know, leave options open and as you get information, then you can make decisions. So the J is the quick to make the decisions and the P, which is the perception, the perceiving, that is the one that wants to kind of leave it open for more options. So those are the four dichotomies to the different sections on the MBTI. So let me give y'all a little story about the MBTI. I am obsessed with the Myers-Briggs type. So one thing that happened to me as I was working in higher education, I used to have student assistants and they were basically like GAs, but they weren't in grad school. So they worked for us about 20 to 25 hours a week. Well, all of my students' assistants would always come in and just gush about everything that was going on in their life. You know, girlfriends, boyfriends, parties on campus. Well, maybe not parties on campus because they would have gotten in trouble. But, you know, all of their thoughts and their feelings and the things they were going through and how hard this homework was or, you know, things that were going on at home. But I had one student and he would never tell me anything. Literally, it was like pulling teeth. I'd be like, okay, so what's going on? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, so eventually I realized I just didn't understand who he was. So I was like, okay, I need you to go take the Myers-Briggs type. And he took it. We got his type back. He's an INTP. I was like, oh, this changes so many things. Because I knew he was introverted. He was intuit intuitive. He was a thinking and a perceiver. So he wanted puzzles. He wanted to figure out puzzles and naps and, you know, not really talk about emotions and things like my other students did. So it helped me realize what work I could give to him and help him thrive in that environment. And once that happened, he was such a much better student and we were able to work much better. It was much easier as we went forward through our working relationship. So if you're struggling to understand somebody on your team or somebody, you know, that that you supervise, this is a tool that can help you with that. As I mentioned before, the Myers-Briggs type is 
your nature. This is just how you innately are. And some people don't like this because it's like black or white. You can't, there's not a spectrum, but there really is a spectrum. It's like how much you relate to that. That's how I feel about it. I also don't believe that there's a thing called ambiverts. I believe that you're either an introvert or an extrovert and you're somewhere on this scale, what you go to most naturally. Now, this is this tool is a way to help you turn behavior into insights. You see the behavior and you understand why people do it. So that's why I love the MBTI. Oh, Y'all, if you loved today's video, learning the differences between the Enneagram and the Myers-Briggs type indicator, go ahead and subscribe to my channel because I'm making more content like this each and every week right here on the YouTube. And I am sharing tutorials and tips and things that can help you grow your business. And I would love to see you take on this world, be an entrepreneur and just kick booty. So make sure you subscribe and we can keep hanging out here each and every week. But if you like today's video, also give me a big thumbs up so I can make sure that I keep making content similar to this and keep helping y'all out. But yeah, y'all, the Myers-Briggs and the Enneagram, truly, once you have that self-awareness about who you are, you can help people understand you. But when you understand, you know, like team members or spouses or whoever, family members, your world and how you view them doing things and why they do it and understanding them, it's going to make so much more sense. Let me give a quick example. But my sister's an Enneagram 8, which they do not like being controlled. They want to be the ones in control. Again, I'm a 4. I'm emotional. I like being the most unique. And sometimes we can go head to head because we are both very fired up about what we do and we believe in what we believe in. But it can be hard because, you know, I'm emotional. She's not emotional. And so she's just like, this is what it is. It's a business, you know? So it's very interesting, but it helps me understand why she's doing that. She's not doing it to be mean or because she doesn't like me. She's doing that because that's her personality. That's her nature. That's how she was nurtured. So those things help you understand people and will help your relationships, whether they're personal or working. So that is all the things about the differences between Enneagram and Myers-Briggs type. But yeah, y'all, I will see you on the next one. Bye, y'all.